Hi and welcome to another Real Magic View discussion which is kind of a review but what I'm doing with these is going back a little bit further to stuff we might have had in our drawers for ages that we kind of bought at Magic conventions and kind of got really excited about and put it on our shelves and then we go right we get onto that next and then we kind of get new stuff and that goes on our shelves and this goes in a drawer and gets forgotten about and that's kind of what I'm trying to do is delve back and find those those gems that we found um, got really excited about but then never really got back to and, and this week we're looking at Wayne Goodman's Look Sharp uh, from Alakazam. Now this is something I had knocking about ages ago. This was released in 2011 so I had this knocking about ages ago. I was going to do it, never got around to it. I think I ended up selling it maybe and, and I got hold of another, another one recently and it's been a bit of a revelation. Um, a bit like a lot of these things that I find uh, <laughs> that I've had knocking around for ages. I, I experimented, I took this out to, to a book in the other day and what, what was really interesting, and there's a bit of footage I'll show you, uh, actually I'll show you it now. Is that yours? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Well, do the favour, just tap the top of that. <laughs> Alright. No. It just comes... <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at his face. It is. <laughs> and not a drink has been taken. Just <laughs> do the favour. Tap it again with the pen. No. Ta tap it again with the pen. Watch. Oh shit! Hang on. Tap it again. <laughs> yeah, pull it out a bit and just show. Look at the pen. <laughs> No. Oh, no. I'm rolling. No. No, seriously. Oh, God. Is that your car? Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, so there's, there's the footage, and this was at the end of the night. And interestingly, I performed this trick um, at a few tables at the main gig so to speak and the tables were quite big and I wasn't quite hitting with it um, and and I'd nearly written it off and I don't mean written off as a bad trick but as a closer as a kind of you know I knew there was something in it but then what I realized is the tables were too big for it if, if, if this trick has got an intimacy to it I think and so it's one of those ones I, when you're walking around doing that drinks reception first when you've got that intimacy you've got people close to you but when you get onto the bigger tables I think it didn't work quite so well for me but when I did get into that intimate situation, meaning I had the, the audience close up to me, the reaction was just brilliant. And actually people said it was one of their favorite tricks of the night. And that's just for me, by the way. Some people might have taken this out on stage and, and stormed with it. So I mean, that's not the be all and end all. That's not the, the only opinion out there. But um, the things that worried me about this trick, first of all, right, were obviously the thing of they're holding something in their hand which clearly doesn't really look on inspection like a Sharpie. But I wasn't that worried about that because I've done quite a lot. I've, I did a talk with a neuroscientist a couple of years ago um, about the, the science of magic and about in, inattentional blindness. And basically what inattentional blindness is, is that thing of if you're not looking for something, you, a lot of the time you won't even see it if it's in front of your face. So there's been loads of great stuff. Richard Wiseman's done loads of stuff on this on YouTube. Um, if I remember, I'll put a link uh, below, but the Gorillas in the Mist experiments where you will, you'd be watching a basketball match and counting the amount of players and not notice that someone dressed as a gorilla comes right into the middle of the screen, it looks straight at the camera and then walks back out again. Um, the fact that motorcycling and cycling can be dangerous because when people look in their rear view mirrors, they're not actually looking for cyclists and motorcyclists, they're looking for cars. So even if they see them, their brain doesn't process them because they're not looking for them and that's why a lot of cyclists and motorists, that's why it says look, uh, think bike, by the way. It's telling you, it's reminding you that bikes are there. So all that stuff we know, we know scientifically now that you know inattentional blindness exists and that's really important for our magic because if we know that then it can give us trust that this sort of stuff's going to be all right so as a magician i suggest you look into inattentional blindness because once you have that you just you can just relax a lot about that stuff so there's always this feeling when you give someone the pen and say tap the deck with the pen when it's clearly a kind of bit of paper wedged into a sharpie lid you're convinced they're going to actually of course 
they don't see it because why would they? Because it's a card trick, it's not a sharpie trick. And it's kind of like putting the pen behind the ear with a coin. They think it's a coin trick, so they're not looking for anything to happen with a pen. And that's as magicians is what we work with, right? Because they don't know what's going to happen. So if we can create a situation that's so different from what their expectation is, then we can get away with anything. You know, that's why pickpocketing is so much harder when people know they're going to be pickpocketed. Now, of course, it still works because we use that in a different way, but I'm not going to go into that. The other thing is this idea that you have two cards. If you if you do the standard routine, and by the way, Peter Nardi's got another um, routine on the DVD that doesn't use this way of doing it, which is actually brilliant, but I just experimented with a basic routine you get um, from uh, Wayne Goodman uh, on, the, on the DVD. So you get two cards signed, one of them is, uh, sorry, one signed and one isn't. And then that to me is alarm bells straight away, all right? Because then you start thinking, well, actually, they're gonna think, well, why did I sign that? And obviously they don't sign one of them because it's a duplicate, the thing that's in the pen. So I'm going, oh, why, why would they sign that? And not? I'm starting to worry about it and go, well, are they gonna question that? And of course, again, it's the magician mind, uh, the magician monkey mind going, uh, trying to put too much pragmatic stuff onto this. And actually, they don't think about it. For the same reason they don't notice the pen is there, because their mind is occupied on something different, the fact that they're going, oh my God, this pen is now a, a playing card. So because it's occupied on that, they're not thinking of answering those questions, you know? So, so you've got the inattentional blindness thing, you've got the fact they don't care that one is signed and one's not because it's all so amazing to them, and you've got the fact that this pen that turning into a Sharpie is really odd. It's a really, nobody would ever expect that. And, and there's this lovely moment you get in some tricks where there's such a long amount of time when you can see them processing it. And you see this, you saw that in the footage. He's holding a thing and he's even hitting the card with the wrong end. So it's visually clearly not a Sharpie, right? So the moment where I was, you go look at the pen and it, it, it's like, sometimes it's like 10 seconds when they're kind of really, and then they see something different, they still can't process what it is, and then it happens. And that is a really special moment, I think. So, uh, there it is, look sharp, all right? Get it out your drawer, you know, have a look at it. And it's available for Alakazam, I think it's available at the moment. I think Wayne Goodman's doing lectures at the moment, so he'll, I'm sure, have some. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's all I can say about it. It's a good trick. It's now going to be, again, in my magic. The thing about doing this review is I've got like loads of stuff ending up in my, my magic stuff is getting bigger. I'm turning up to gigs with these big sort of, of weird sort of makeup cases that sort of unfold in that, but, but that's the way it goes. So uh, yeah, get hold of it uh, from Alakazam. If you want to have a look at that, you get two cards with it. So they do talk about giving it away as a souvenir, which would be lovely. But I think if you if you buy the refills, you only get like four or five. So to me, it's, I didn't feel like I had to give it away, really, and I, you know, they've had a nice time. The one with a sign card can have that <laughs> as a wonderful souvenir. So thanks very much. Um, go and have a look at Card Magic Course, please, because, you know, that's my course and it's good. Uh, if you want a free download of the Cull, spread Cull, cardmagiccourse.com forward slash Cull. And if you are a beginner and you want to learn Card Magic, uh, that's Card Magic Course forward slash beginners. And if you know anybody that wants to learn Card Magic, uh, feel free to give them that link. Have a great one. I'll be back next time with a longer, more in-depth review. Uh, but for now, have a lovely, lovely day.